very good morning to all of the student welcome to the physics class in this session we will study chapter number 10 of class 12 and the name of chapter is magnetic classification of substances student this is important chapter because from this chapter one long question is generally asked in the board examination so in this chapter we will discuss classification of substances on the basis of their nature and some important definitions which are generally asked in the board exam nation okay so start student first of all i want to tell you what is diamagnetic substances paramagnetic substances and ferromagnetic substances means you can say that on the magnetic behavior substances can be categorized into three parts first paramagnetic substances so student when when we place any substance generally magnetic substance in the magnetic field and that substance move opposite direction in the magnetic field that means you can say that it moves in the opposite direction of magnetic field or repel then such types of substances are called diamagnetic substances the example of diamagnetic substances are bismuth zinc copper silver gold etc so these are the substances when they are placed in the magnetic field they repel from the magnetic field such type of substances are called paramagnetic sorry diamagnetic substances now paramagnetic substances there are some substances when they are placed in the magnetic field they are attracted very slowly in the direction of magnetic field such type of substances are called paramagnetic substances examples are like some elements metallic elements like aluminum sodium platinum manganese liquids in the case of liquids chlorine liquid oxygen solutions of salt so these are some examples of paramagnetic substances paramagnetic substances have some extra property in the compare of diamagnetic substances okay student now we will discuss ferromagnetic substances so when we placed any magnetic substance in the magnetic field they are strongly attracted towards the magnetic field such types of substances are called ferromagnetic substances and the examples are nickel cobalt magnetite so these are the main examples of paramagnetic substances that means they acquire a strong magnetic behavior okay student now we will discuss here some important definitions so the first definition is magnetic induction it is represented by capital b and when when a piece of any substance is placed in the external magnetic field the substance becomes magnetized and the magnetism so produced is called induced magnetism and this phenomenon is called magnetic induction that means magnetic induction is a phenomenon which is produced due to magnetic field that means if we place any substance magnetic substance in the magnetic field then that substance acquires a magnetic property and becomes like a magnet this property or this phenomenon is known as magnetic induction it is represented by capital b okay so now the unit of the si unit of magnetic induction is tesla and weber per meter square is also the unit and there are some also in other units is newton per ampere meter and its cgs unit is gauss one gauss is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 tesla now student the next definition is intensity of magnetization and it is represented by capital m the intensity of magnetization or simply magnetization of a magnetized substance represent the extent to which the substance is magnetized it is defined as the magnetic moment per unit volume of a magnetized substance it is represented by capital m vector because it is a vector quantity 
and small m upon capital B where small m is the magnetic moment and V is the volume so its SI unit is ampere per meter ok students now the next topic is magnetic intensity or magnetic field strength it is represented by capital H so there is a relation H is equal to capital B upon mu naught minus capital M so magnetic intensity H is defined by the above relation so in this relation B is the magnetic field induction inside the substance and capital M is the intensity of magnetization and mu naught is the permeability of free space so by the above relation we can define intensity of magnetization capital H clear ok students so the unit of H in SI system is same as M ampere per meter but in the case of CJ system its unit is or state and one or state is equal to one cos per mu naught and on simplify we get 10 to power minus 4 tesla upon mu naught one or state is equal to 10 to power minus 4 tesla upon 4 pi into 10 to power minus 7 tesla meter per ampere so its final value is 80 ampere per meter clear ok students now the next definition is magnetic permeability and it is represented by mu so it is defined as the ratio of magnetic induction B inside the magnetized substance to the magnetic intensity capital H of the magnetic field so mu is equal to B upon H B and H both are both are vector quantities so from this relation we can find the unit of uh, magnetic permeability which is Newton per ampere square and Tesla meter per ampere or we can also write here Weber per ampere meter clear student now the next definition is most important and it is generally asked so relative magnetic permeability in the case of relative word we use R so it becomes mu R the relative magnetic permeability of a substance is the ratio of magnetic permeability mu of the substance to the permeability of free space mu naught that means mu r is the ratio of mu and mu naught clear now the relative permeability of a substance is defined as the ratio of magnetic flux density b in the substance when placed in the magnetic field and the flux density b naught in vacuum in the same field that means it is a second definition of uh, relative permeability so you can write any one of the above definition ok students now the next definition is magnetic susceptibility and it is rep represented by a greek word greek letter chi m and we know that the magnetization m is directly proportional to the magnetic intensity capital H it means that we know that the field of magnetization means capital M is directly proportional to capital H so we know that when we remove any proportionality sign we use a constant so here the constant is chi m so from the above value we can find the value of chi m and it becomes capital M upon capital H so it may be defined as the ratio of intensity of magnetization capital M to the magnetic intensity of the magnetizing field clear ok now students relation between relative permeability mu r and magnetic susceptibility chi m this is also important derivation so we know that h is equal to b upon mu naught minus m this relation is discussed by me above so from this relation we can find the value of b where b is a magnetic induction so it becomes mu naught in bracket capital H plus capital M now we know that M is equal to chi M into H it is a relation between M and H so putting this value we get B is equal to mu naught in bracket 1 plus chi M into H again we know that B is equal to mu into H 
so for this value we get mu is equal to mu naught in bracket 1 plus chi m now mu upon mu naught is equal to mu r relative permeability so it becomes mu r is equal to 1 plus chi m so this is the relation between magnetic susceptibility and relative permeability clear okay students now we will discuss the definition of para di di dia para and paramagnetic substances with their properties so as we already discussed diamagnetic substances are those substances when they are placed in the magnetic field they ripple freely so these substances are called diamagnetic substances and there are some properties of diamagnetic substances which are given first when a rod of diamagnetic material is sus suspended freely between two magnetic poles then its axis becomes perpendicular to the magnetic field so this is the first property of diamagnetic substances now the second property is in a non uniform magnetic field the diamagnetic substance tends to move from the stronger to the weaker part of the field because we know that diamagnetic substances are ripple so in the case of non uniform they move from stronger to lower part of the magnetic field clear okay now student the third property is if a diamagnetic solution is poured into a u2 and one arm of this u tube is placed between the poles of a strong magnet the level of solution in that arm is depressed that means it will be removed due to the due to its nature clear okay student next a diamagnetic gas when allowed to ascend in between the poles of a magnet it spreads across the field that means it removes from the magnetic field now the next property is the susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance is independent of temperature that means it it never depend on the temperature of the circumference clear now paramagnetic substances as you know that when a substances are placed in the magnetic field they strong in the direction of magnetic field such type of substances are called paramagnetic substances clear okay students now now student there are some properties of paramagnetic substances so they are the first property when a rod of paramagnetic material is suspended in the magnetic field the, between two magnetic poles then its axis becomes parallel to the magnetic field but in the case of diamagnetic field it is it becomes perpendicular but in the case of paramagnetic field it becomes parallel that means it is attracted towards the magnetic field now the next property is in a non uniform magnetic field the magnet paramagnetic substances tend to move from weaker to stronger part of the magnetic field it is just opposite to the diamagnetic substances clear now the next property is if a paramagnetic solution is poured in a u tube and one arm of the u tube is poured so it moves in the strong poles the level of the solution in that arm rises clear okay now now the next property is a paramagnetic gas when allowed to ascend between two between the poles pieces of a magnet spreads along the field the susceptibility of a paramagnetic substance varies inversely as the kelvin temperature of the substance that means chi m is inversely proportional to 1 upon capital t clear now paramagnetic substances so paramagnetic substances are those substances when they are placed in the magnetic field they are strongly attracted towards the magnetic field as the nickel cobalt iron these are the best example of paramagnetic substances clear now there are some properties of paramagnetic substances first a strong attract strongly attracted towards the magnetic field this is the first property second property a paramagnetic rod freely suspended in the magnetic field readily rise, 
sets itself in the magnetic field that means it is strongly attracted between the magnetic poles and stay rest position clear the relative permeability is very large for the parametric substances and the magnetic susceptibility chi m is very large and it changes with temperature in a very complex way for the such substances so these are the properties of parametric substances now we will discuss here curie temperature formation curie temperature means paramagnetism decreases with the rise in the temperature means when we increase the temperature of any ferromagnetic substance then its property of ferromagnetism decreases that means the substance become paramagnetic or on heating it becomes diamagnetic clear so this is the temperature at which any substance loses its property is called curie temperature so it becomes different for the different substances student the curie temperature for iron is 770 and nickel is 358 that means at 770 degree temperature iron loses its ferromagnetic property and becomes into the paramagnetic or diamagnetic substances clear okay students now student we will discuss one diagram in this diagram you see that there are three figures in first figure arrows are moving in the same direction and in the second figure they are moving in the same direction but randomly and the last examination all the arrows are moving in the same direction so the first diagram shows the condition of ferromagnetism sorry paramagnetism so when we apply external magnetic field then the particles which are showing their nature as a paramagnetic they becomes ferromagnetic and ferromagnetic substances are highly attracted towards the magnetic field that means they show a proper wave structure so this becomes a ferromagnetic and this becomes a paramagnetic and this is the intermediate condition between these two conditions clear okay students now now student in this topic now the next topic is hysteresis retentivity and coercivity there are three important points which we will discuss here so first of all we will discuss a curve which is formed between m and h that means you know that you know that what is h h means magnetic intensity and what is the meaning of capital m so capital m is the intensity of magnetization so if we draw a graph between capital h and small capital h and capital m then we get a curve like this this curve is known as hysteresis curve now on the y axis that means on the intensity of magnetization so there is a gap on the y axis and it will be ob this gap on the y axis that means intensity of magnetization so this gap is called retentivity clear now when we move on the x axis in the opposite direction that means negative x axis then we gap we get another gap we get another gap on the x axis and this gap is known as coercivity so student you can see that here coercivity is a gap on the x axis in the negative direction that means you can say that it is a gap in the intense magnetic intensity clear and this curve is known as hysteresis curve clear there are some losses are also take place in the magnetic substances and these losses are so first loss is hysteresis loss a paramagnetic substances students see see here a ferromagnetic substances consist consist of local region called domains and when they are moving in all the direction and they place in the magnetic field then they 
lose some their magnetic property and such types of losses are called hysteresis loss now the proper definition of hysteresis loss is you can see here the energy loss per unit volume of a substance in a complete cycle cycle of a magnetization is equal to the area of hysteresis loop means in the case of loop when we form when the magnetic substances form a loop then there is a loss take place and this loss is related to the energy of the magnetic substances so this loss is called hysteresis loss clear okay students so in this lecture we discuss some important definitions some important relations properties of magnetic substances like para dia and ferro on their on the basis of their magnetic behavior and this is the most important chapter because a long question is definitely asked from this chapter in the board examination so student try to understand the definitions and learn this chapter very carefully okay students good day bye students thank you very much